Third year? Fair. <laughs> Maybe once. That was like a thing. Get moving on. Fair? That's the first thing on our. First topic is the fair. We, um, we had, I think the fair was a, a very much a success. Um, Tawny and I were there um, kind of switching off in the morning and in the evening. A couple of nights, Tony came back. Um, we were there through the weekend. And as things evolved and things changed, we, um, the fair facilities team was incredible. Um, we had a plug drain and by the rotary corn booth and we got barrels and block that so we didn't have anybody with a slip trip um, really evolved as, as a moving target and as risks come up we addressed them changed and I think they had a very successful fair the sheriff's department took one had one person that went away um, the rest of it was um, very low-key is very family oriented and they had record people attending the rodeo <laughs> and the <laughs> lawnmower races and demolition derby on Sunday. And so overall it was very successful. Riverside Fire Authority worked well with law enforcement and an incident command meeting every morning and they rotated the, um, the, the person in charge so that it wasn't, if there truly was an emergency, if Somebody from the sheriff's office has been there all week doing that. If that person wasn't there, the feeling is that people kind of, who do we who do we talk to, who do we react to? But it was an evolving, changing chain of command. It was very successful. Uh, when you have that many people in close proximity, I think it really does matter. And Mike Pitt is the one that spearheads. Yes. Yep. He, we need to send a thank you to him. Mm -hmm. It would be good. And we've talked, this is a, kind of a post-fair debrief in any big fire the FEMA and the people that are involved in a big fire or a big event usually have a, they call a hot wash or a meeting to oh. talk about successes and talk about things that we for next year um, there's going to be a pre-fair June tabletop uh, training that we would get emergency management people together um, June versus July and August um, so that gear up for the fair and build upon this instant command um, model Is. Amazing the fair maintenance people, um, maintenance electricians and Matt and Jared and Steve, they were doing a, they were doing a changeover because you have to sanitize and clean, <laughs> clean, right. Excuse me. clean out barns between. Oh yeah, when they're mo moving in. Oh yeah, they were. So people were there from 8 in the morning to 4.30 back from their team in shifts. So it was very, very impressive. Everybody seems to like the food. There's no sickness. I haven't hurt anybody. <laughs> so, that's good. Are we allergic? No. Are you allergic to us? No, it's not you. <laughs> so, emergency action no, plans. plans. Uh, second issue or second topic here. I think we need to push forward and work on an all call system that people get um, when there's an event in the building that instead of using Lewis County Alert, we use a county, some kind of system of where people in the building would get a text and say, we've got an intruder, we have this event, we've got something at the railroad tracks. And then when it ends, a conclusion email where people are not wondering when did the event end. So it's been discussed in the past, so we want to, emergency management safety, want to start looking for that model and start working on that. Um, Steve Mansfield will assist. He has um, handled the emergency manager for the county. So right. internally, he, he'll guide us, but he wants us to yeah. work on this. Yes. claims for 2017 we have 27 for 17 for 2017 and for um, year to date to the end of July we have 27 open right now so kind of on track we don't usually have any more than 40 to 45 45 is, is um, average for us so we're on track for that 
and employment. The quarterly billing for the second quarter was $15,569.55. So again, pretty good there as well. Uh, for the same time period last year, we had $36,570.67. So grand total of just over 68700 for the whole year last year. So we're, we're pretty close to right on track. That is all I have. I have a the WSI fall conference coming up soon that I will be going to. Yeah, that it's all of the, they have uh, conference four times a year for issues that come up, updates, um, legislative updates, um, for industrial appeal decisions that might throw a kink into things or and how, how things seem to be rolling out and, and kind of kind of issues when there are things coming up that um, that we all have concern about. So different kinds of different sorts of things that come up in the conferences. So you know, it's good information. They pick a couple of topics, they have a couple of guest speakers come in usually. And um, then it's like I said, legislative updates, what's hot topic for this term and um, concerns coming up and things that the WSIA are going to be looking at and lobbying for on our behalf. So they keep us pretty up to date. That's it for me. Ooh, I'm next. Public mm -hmm. records. So uh, just a couple of items. Um, Rachel and I have been working with GovQA folks for the last couple of weeks having some webinar meetings as far as updating um, some functions and some other features in our GovQA system that we weren't currently using but were actually in our original uh, module. Um, the most significant change is now requesters can now submit requests online through mm -hmm. our portal. Um, when we went live with the program in May of 16, um, that was an option at, at that time we chose not to do that so now it's a lot of um, less data entry for Rachel and, I, and myself for as far as putting the actual request in and that type of thing so um, I've reached out to the um, law enforcement especially for 911 calls and CAD reports and what have you because um, they've been in essence emailing our 911 center and um, sending their requests for those um, the prosecutor's office does a lot of those requests as well so now it's it's easier most of those individuals already have logins and so they can just go onto the portal login submit a new request and then they can just type that in and then that information is auto populated through GovQA and and as soon as it's entered into the system, the customer receives a, um, a welcome email, if you will, says we've received your request and then it will be forwarded to the appropriate departments. So that's the, the most significant change there. So um, it's on our website? That yes, it is. It's on our website. I believe it's right above the actual where you log into the actual portal itself. It's is submit a new request. And people have found it already, so like, that's good. So, um, and then you don't have to decipher their handwriting when it's yeah. Good. Those are kind of yeah. Uh, I mean, we still obviously get the handwritten ones and other you know emails and that type of thing. But um, this way, a person can type in what information that they're they're wanting, and, and Rachel and I don't have to decipher if that's an E or a C or <laughs> email addresses are a big one. A lot of times individuals will put their email their addresses in and we're having to try to decipher what that is and, and, and if we kind of guess as to what it is it might not actually get to that individual. Um, I have reached out to some of the departments that I work with on a fairly regular basis as far as collecting records and what have you. So um, I've spoken with uh, Cheryl in 911 and I'm reaching out to our folks in community development and um, the SO to kind of have a 
just a one-on-one -on -one chat to let them know that some of the new features that are in the GovQA, let them, them know that we can now see getting requests submitted. And as, as far as working with these other departments, since I've been doing this for a year now, as far as what's working, what's not working, how we can maybe streamline what I can do to make things easier for them and vice versa. So that's what I have. Oh, good. We're making progress, little by little. <laughs> Do we need to do a press release or something let people know that? Well, it's actually on our, our website um, as far as on our, our main page. Yep. But I, other than I was going to send an email to the actual like local law enforcement. But I mean, if you we have a media list, it'd be nice to <coughs> let folks know where to go. We can look like, into We're making progress. So we can look into that. We can do that. In the last 30 days, we had one paint. Someone just ran across white paint. <laughs> I was waiting. Well, their car was white. <laughs> I was oh, waiting. Oh, no. <laughs> Aren't you the optimist? <laughs> At least it wasn't. It was a, a yellow. That would be. Oh. I've heard of a yellow paint, but I have not seen the picture. But the first car picture I got that I heard. <coughs> well, the white is that's just the fog rumble line. strip fog line, right? But on a gold or brown car. It's <laughs> it becomes uh, cloudy. So it comes to the sky. I'm sure we'll hear more about it. We also do cities, and so it could be, it could be lanes <coughs> too. People changing lanes before they're supposed to. And we try to get the details because the state is painting, so DOT's oh. paint is not our paint, right? Um, and we don't want to pay for. <laughs> No, their um, they didn't they didn't have enough, enough buffer or whatever the situation is. So we try to really nail down the details and dwell down and make sure that it is our responsibility. <coughs> so risk pool. So a week ago Friday, Jill came in from the risk pool and we visited a couple of sites. Um, from, she looked at at the motor pool and um, she looked at the tipping floor and the we toured those sites and her eye for risk is uh, very very refined she spends one to two days a week out in 26 counties helping them so it was very good to get her input she came in um, spent the morning and uh, it was a successful visit That's it on our agenda. I know. So will she come back then? And She's producing a report with pictures, and we'll come back and, and present those to us. Okay. And come up with some suggestions. Um, she, this is an annual visit. She goes out to all 26 counties and looks, um, boots on the ground, and, and looks and see where uh, the chances. She came on a Friday, so our public works team were work 410, so I didn't have shops to go to, but. You know, motor pool is very active and very busy. And, um, you know, on a Sunday, we could have 500 trucks, vehicles go through the tipping floor. So those are very um, real risk hazard oriented places. So it was good to have her put her eyes on. Okay. You booked a good work, guys. Thank you. Yes. Well. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Rita's really good at putting press releases. Okay. Okay. Her, her, no. Nope. You can. Who? Uh, me? You. Yes. Um, I'm just curious about the, the paint. Now, do they use the same formula of paint that you do, or do they use a totally different formula? Do they apply it the same or differently? I'm just kind of curious. I think there's a state spec that they have to use a certain a color paint within color and reflectiveness, and we use a very similar spec of paint. Um, so. But maybe not like the same brand or something like that. Right? Uh, it, yeah, maybe not. Um, it would be probably pretty hard to tell <laughs> um, just by looking at the paint. Mm -hmm. So okay, I was just curious about that. Yeah, there's only one or two suppliers that have the state contract. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the state. I mean, so the difference in paint would be waterborne versus oil-based paint, and I'm I almost guarantee 100% the state uses waterborne, which is what we use. So. Can I ask you a question? Oh, 
Me? Sure. No. I was just curious about the volume of uh, public records requests. Are you experiencing a greater volume, or are you experiencing less volume uh, as you've, you know, since you've taken over? Since the I've taken well, since I've taken over. Um, well, right now, I think in that we have running around 340 records requests that we have that we're currently working. Um, that average changes on a daily basis. Are, the, are those old requests or new requests? How do you parse those? Um, well, those are the ones that we currently have open okay. in the system. So some of them are older requests um, that we're still working on. Some of them are requests that are new that have come in and say, let's just take 911 center for an example that those records requests are put into GovQA um, and the turnaround depending on the type of request it is is fairly within a week maybe you know maybe a couple of days so that that turnaround it's kind of an over it, it moves along you know okay. a lot it just depends basically per request how much time it's going to take um, I would have to say Obviously, for within this last summer months, um, depending on the type of request and you know people's availability mm -hmm. to you know, to get things done, sometimes it might take a few extra days to try to get things done or what have you. So. Okay. But there aren't as many new requesters. I'm just kind of curious about that. If that if that's really <gasps> kind of a, since you put because it's been about you know it hasn't been that long since you put the, put in the GovQ and A, and I'm just kind of curious if that's uh, expanded people's requests or if it's. Uh, you know, it reduced it. So I'm just kind of curious. Oh, with, with of using, the new requests. Of the, yeah. but with using GovQA? Yeah, sort of, you know, but making requests in general. Do they, because you put them all in GovQA, right? Um, most of them are in GovQA. Right. So if we have what we refer to as a routine agency business, so mm -hmm. say you want to go to community development to get a copy of your permit for your home or your septic system and that type of thing, and you can go there, and that, in essence, would be a routine agency business. So, um, that one is not necessarily put into GovQA. It's just you know handed over the type of counter. Right. If you were wanting, um, say you we have a, we get a number of requests for the individuals looking for all the permits for said piece of property that have ever been done, which might be you know a number of permits. Say it's a 40 acre piece of property or what have you, or they're expanding and that type of thing. So there might be a, quite a few number of permits. So that will take a little bit of time to to do. So then that particular request might take a few days to search for records and to make sure that we've compiled everything so that particular request is put into GovQA. So, I don't know. Do you think the GovQA system and the, and uh, do you think that that's helping to, uh, for you to uh, respond uh, quicker and, you know, better? Um, it's, I think it's an efficient program. I, you know, it's helpful as far as, you know, is tracking some timelines and, and what have you and be able to communicate with the requester. Um, I actually have a number of records requests that are, are from um, inmates and what have you in, in prison. So those ones take a little bit longer because I actually have to, re, you know, respond to those through snail mail because they don't have an actually email address. So I'm having to generate letters and, and provide records via mail. So that will take a little bit of time. But I do actually find the program to be um, helpful and, and efficient. And we're just doing more things like this most recent thing where you can, if you want to submit a records request, you can now do it online. Yeah, that makes it <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that's, that's, like I said earlier, it's a little bit less data entry for Rachel and myself. It's because we're not having to put that information in then. So I guess your question would be, it should be a little bit, hopefully a little bit quicker, yeah. depending on how many requests that we get, you know, a week. Um, you know, I, we've just, I, just at lunchtime, I got a new one that's actually in, submitted through, you know, when I was gone at lunch, so. So. How many do you, do you think you get a month, just out of curiosity? Oh gosh, I don't know how many a month. I can probably <coughs> tell you how many in a week. Um, About how many a week then? Um, I would probably say, I don't know, on average when you say at least five to... I think that it's dependent on yeah. the week. Yeah, hmm. at least, I mean, I would say we probably on an average get at least one or two a day, depending on that. Sometimes I get, you know, none in one day, so. Right, yeah. right, right. So. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know how many about that, what the volume was. So. Yeah. So. Thank you very much. I yep. appreciate You're it. welcome. Tomorrow and Thursday, we're starting to start. Hi, Gary. How are you doing? Do you have a few minutes after yeah. uh, sure. today? Hi, Brian. Hi, Hello. How are you?
Fine, fine. How's everybody today? Good. We're a little short today. Look, look tall enough. <laughs> busy. Busy, busy. Yeah, I heard the parking lot was full. Of, we heard the parking lot was full across the street. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Is that very selection? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, since Jonathan's not here, so do we just move along? Right, you just... So we her. got executive session, so let's... And then David... Is David coming? David is not here. Okay, so... He sees what you get today. Okay, so there's another executive session. So we got the 18th. So... Absolutely. Should we do these two executive sessions? One's on opioid litigation, and uh, the other one is on uh, Jenkins Mercury. Versus Meager. So, actually, I would recommend that we, um, unless there's something you would like to discuss, uh, we can post that. Okay, both exact. Okay. Because John is part of that too. Part of that too. So, boom, down to <coughs> oh, Cal. Board, board of County Commissioners agenda items. Yes, let's do you guys. Pill. Pill. So uh, the bottom line with PILT is we contacted um, the Department of Interior. Uh, so thank you very much for the reference. That is the only way we can, we can get anyone. So the Department of Interior said, we have turned the matter over to Department of Justice. We are will not deal with you individually. So called Department of Justice. They, they indicated to me that they would only um, if we were to file our own suit, they would enjoin us with the class. So rather than wasting the money or the time to do that, uh, plus the federal filing fee, because this will be, again, Western uh, Washington federal court as opposed to just local or Thurston County Superior Court. So um, to save money and time, let's hop on board with the class and out of our 8,200, we'll They'll, the, their fee will be approximately a third. So, so a third of that winds up being their fee. 24, 25 bucks. Correct. Yeah. I thought you were pull that out of your pocket, bro. I thought you were doing it. How are you fine? Just getting the calculator here. Just let me know I was close. I, I, you know, I'm sure you were. What was it? 80 what? 8200. 82. So it'll be tw about uh, 2730 that, that, that they will take. So. Does it does it matter how many other counties jump on board? So just about every county in Washington State has jumped on board. There's okay. not three or seven. So everybody emailed email that Becky got this morning. It was 29 or something like that. Right. So and everybody's paying the third. Everybody's just going to do the third. So it doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Do we need a so we would need the commissioners, you, uh, you would need to make a motion. a motion and direct us to join the class. Okay, I'll make a motion to join the, is it class action lawsuit? Yes. Against the, the federal Department of Interior. Department of Interior for the uh, Hilt lawsuit. Perfect. Okay. Second. Okay. It's going to be seconded to have Lewis County join the class action suit against the Department of Interior regarding Hilt. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So I will bring over the form for you to sign. Okay. I'm gonna want to wrap. No. So that is something for Eric. Okay, so he's not here. He's not here. Assessor public disclosure policy. That's the last thing on our list. I guess that's something I know about. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as you know, uh, the commissioners adopted uh, last year, the, the policy dealing with public disclosure requests. 
and that was modeled after uh, many municipalities in, in Snohomish County in particular, uh, their, their model that seemed to be uh, successful and manageable and accomplish all the goals that are in harmony with uh, the provisions of the Public Records Act. So um, at that time, you as the BOCC adopted it, which meant every department under the BOCC also adopted it. So, so that was covered. However, the elected officials, because they're independent, uh, were given the option. And so I met independently with, with each of them. And um, everyone has adopted the county's policy except for the assessor. Um, she has some concerns. I'm, I'm actually meeting with her and Casey after I meet with you after this meeting. Uh, and uh, she, she's, she's just got some concerns and I'm not sure what they are. So uh, we'll see what she uh, wants added or taken away from our existing policy. We, we are, as Casey mentioned, is, and you know, we, we did, we are tweaking it just a little bit. There's a, we found a Scribner's error that's we're gonna take out, the, just an extra line that happened. <clears throat> Made it through and um, just tighten up some of the language. We're also um, adopting the um, Department of Corrections treatment of public records requests by inmates because we have um, an issue uh, with one of our um, inmates, and so we're going to um, adopt that, and then, then we'll present it to you again. So. You know, they'll approve the, the adoption of the revised, but the revision will be minor. So we'll report back to you as soon as we know what the concerns are of the assessor. Diane shared with me a little bit that um, it had a lot to do with what Casey was talking about as far as normal course of business disclosures. People come in and just ask for something that would be, you'd give them <coughs> their normal course of business. And she was concerned about how the policy addressed that issue or didn't address that issue. And so I think she was hoping for some revisions to include some stuff about that. We wanted to make it consistent with, for example, public works, you know, you get permits, you know, somebody comes in just, hey, can I, have a couple paper, some paperwork about my property or my neighbor's property or something like that. Normal course of business, they'll just print out the permits of them, copies that have been pulled, and give, just give them to them because it's not a, a big cost or anything. So Diane has that issue of, you know, some of her stuff is just normal course of business, but the other good news is a lot of what her her records are they're already in the public domain. Yeah, they're already yes. public. Right. And so, yeah, most of the person. Uh, okay. Under the statute, we're permitted to reference the website so that they can just go. Get themselves. Exactly. And so that, that would cut down on county staff time and and whatever. But I know there's. And the requester can just get it. Right. For, for free. Yeah. For free. But, you know, there's. Uh, a certain number of folks who just like the customer service thing and that's of course what we're here for is customer service and provide that information so um, we'll, we'll just see which direction she wants to go. Okay. Hmm. Well that's our agenda. Terrific. <laughs> and everyone's met Colin, our, our new civil mm -hmm. Yeah. Tony and he's he's on board. He's coming from Grace Harbor. Well, he could. I told him he had to prepare a brief biography or <laughs> be prepared to answer twenty questions. How long so, were you? so I was there for a little uh, about a year, and prior to that, I was working in Thurston County, um, doing uh, <clears throat> public defense there in independencies. Um, and so I mean that that was that's essentially what, what I did for the most part in Grace Harbor was involving public records issues as well as um, civil civil asset forfeiture issues for the county and dependencies and terminations on behalf of the state within the, the prosecutor's office. So, yeah. Welcome aboard. Yes, absolutely. Well, we're done. I'm sure that Ross has already told you how much fun we are. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. Way, As the word got far. out, there we are. Way, we're way over the top. <laughs> okay. Okay. Down there. Yeah, but just, right. just for a minute. No worries. I I can't catch up with you. Run you over, John. Well, I'll take you. Not very nice. Run you over.